In this video, we're going to talk about model building and variable selection. And before I get into a bit of a guide to doing it, I want to start with some just general comments. So the first thing I want to point out is that there is no right way of doing it. There are wrong ways of doing it, but there's not one right way of doing it. If there was the right way to build your model and select variables, we wouldn't really need to think much about it. We would have built an algorithm to do it, plug in our data, return a model, final model to us. So that's what these automated, automated um, model uh, variable selection procedures are trying to achieve, and there are weaknesses um, in doing those. So let me just kind of write this down. There is no right way. But there are wrong ways. And one, one thing I like to say to try and drive this point home, if you gave two of the top researchers in their field the exact same set of data, the exact same research question, they're quite likely going to come up with different models and different variables in there and slightly different approaches to trying to answer that question. Right, so again, I just do want to stress this. You know, there's not one right way of doing it. There definitely are wrong things to do, but there's not one correct way to do it. The approach I like to think of it as being half science, half art. So again, there's a combination of using statistics and numerical approaches, and there's a combination of using um, thinking and creativity in there as well. One thing you want to incorporate is using prior knowledge. So use what you already know about this subject area or this research question you're looking at. If you know certain variables are confounders, make sure you measure those when you collect data and adjust for them in your model. Incorporate the things you already know. One important one, the approach depends on your goal. And what I mean by that is, if you're building an effect size model, you're trying to estimate the effect of some variable on the outcome, or if you're trying to build a predictive model, if you're trying to predict the outcome. So we're going to go through and first look at some approaches or some guides to building a model and selecting variables when you want to estimate the effect of x1 on some outcome. And then we're also going to look briefly at um, a guide or some suggestions on approaches to selecting variables and building a model when the goal is to predict the outcome. Um, one that I cannot stress enough, and I really want to stress it because in a course, especially one like this, where we're in a classroom, um, well, I guess we're not in the classroom right now, we're kind of in a, a virtual room where I'm, I'm talking to a camera in, in an empty room, but um, <clears throat> what happens in a course is we spend so much time on all the technical ideas, right? What are, what's confounding, what's mediation, what's linear regression, what's logistic regression, how do we work with it, what are all the components, all these different ideas that we don't spend time on some of the stuff that is really important but doesn't fit into the course. Right? So the data collection and study design are extremely important as well as lots of data exploration. So before you get into just um, fitting a model, you really want to look at univariate summaries, bivariate summaries, getting a feel for the data, checking, you know, seeing if data is missing, if there's any weird observations. You really want to do this data exploration to death. It really informs your model building um, procedures once you get to actually trying to fit a model to your data. Um, so, of course, when we're working through the ideas in the course, we need to present a lot more of the technical content, and we lean on, in the intro stats course, we learned a lot of the tools to do this univariate and bivariate data exploration. Right? So we lean on the um, expectation that you've built this understanding of how to go in and explore the data a lot, make plots and summaries and so on. So we won't spend much time doing that, but it's an extremely important part of the model building um, procedure. One thing I like to stress is that there's no purely statistical solution. 
Um, and so again, these automated model building procedures are an attempt at that, right? trying to just take some numeric algorithm that data goes in, final model comes out. Um, and they, you know, they have their place in the world, but um, they don't, I don't think they work too well. Um, so I just do want to stress that, that there is a lot of half science, half art that goes into it. One important point, and we've uh, looked at this through earlier videos in the course, don't just include all X variables. So we saw the problems that can happen with this when we just say, we have some data, let's include every variable we have in a model. We've seen the bias that that can introduce. Um, and the final thing I want to say, I won't write it down here, but um, all the um, ideas we talk about with building a model to estimate the effect of some variable on the outcome, as well as the approaches to building a model to try and predict an outcome, they apply to all the different regression models we're going to look at in the course. So we're going to spend time on this, talking about model building and variable selection procedures in the context of a linear regression model, which is where we are in the course right now. When we get to um, the next topic of logistic regression, we might get a data set, try and build a model to estimate the effect of X on some binary outcome, or we might build a model to try and predict some binary outcome. The concepts of confounding effect modification, all these are the exact same, as well as the approaches to building the model and selecting the variable, again, are the exact same in concept, regardless of the type of regression model that we're working with. So now let's get into a bit of a, a guide to building a model and selecting variables, first for an effect size model, and then for a predictive model. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.